Hey everyone, it's Joey with Titan Tech, and today we're going to be starting a new series uh, covering Elixir for Data Science, where we'll be rebuilding all the code from the book R for Data Science with Elixir. Okay, so I'm sure the first question is, why the book R for Data Science? Well, for me, that was the book that first introduced me to data science and really made it approachable, uh, as well as it does a really good job of identifying all the tasks that a data scientist has to do, and not just the glamorous ones of modeling and creating cool metrics. So the next question then is, why Elixir? Well, if we look over here, I've, I've put a couple of pictures in. So based on the Stack Overflow 2022 survey, which came out just a couple days ago, uh, as of the time of the recording of this video, if you look here, Elixir itself, the language, is the number two most loved language behind Rust. Very, very important. Uh, Phoenix is the number one most loved web framework. Again, so that's that's Elixir's main web framework. And what this is saying is, even though the Elixir community is, is relatively small compared to, say, Python or some, something like that, even though it's small, the people who work with Elixir absolutely love it. Right? So it's, so it's a great choice. It's a great pro, uh, language to program in. Now, again, why... Why would we combine Elixir, a programming language, with data science? Well, first of all, data science itself is inherently functional, right? And that's what I've got here. What do I mean by that? What I mean is typically we've got some data that we start with, right? And then we do some transformations. We do some different steps to, to get what we want. Maybe it's, hey, I need to add a column, right? Oh, I need to group some data by, by something. I, then I, maybe I need to summarize, you know, uh, aggregate some data, uh, and then maybe on the maybe what the output is is we've got a you know I've got a new data set or I've got a model or what have you right so so this idea of taking data or taking inputs transforming them and getting outputs is very functional in nature which again elixir is a purely functional language right so they it works well together on top of that there's been a lot of growth in the uh, in the Elixir spaces for machine learning and data science in general. And so what I've done here is I've shown NX. So this would, NX is, is a group of packages that the Elixir community is developing to specifically tackle the, the issues and, and, and the workload of, of machine learning. And so I've, what I've done here is I've linked a post for uh, the Thinking Elixir podcast in which they really do a deep dive into what's going on with machine learning. In addition to that, um, it's great to build models, but if you can't work with data and you can't manipulate it, it makes it really, really hard. Well, that's what Explorer does. Explorer allows you to work with tabular data, also known as data frames. And I've also put a link here as well to the Thinking Elixir podcast, uh, episode 104, where they do a deep dive on Explorer. And so they talk with the creators of these libraries. And, and so you really get a sense of, okay, here's where the Elixir community is right now for data science and also where it's going. So that's, uh, and then the reason I've chosen Elixir to rebuild with, with R for Data Science is I really want to put Elixir through the paces and really understand, okay, it looks very promising, but again, it's all just theory until we actually do it, right? So let's actually put it through, through its paces and, and see where it shines or maybe where it doesn't shine with, with the, the realm of data science. So, as you can see, uh, we're going to go through R for Data Science, but the first couple chapters are just introduction, right? So there's not really any code for us to rebuild. So great read. I would highly recommend go reading it. Uh, get uh, it's, it's good foundational, good step. But we're going to start with the data visualization chapter. And so that's why I'm here on chapter three. So you see is the introduction. Before you can do anything in data science, right, you've got to load your packages, load your libraries. And that's what they're showing here in R. Right, is library tidyverse. That's how you would load the tidyverse packages. Uh, if you don't have that, you would install packages uh, tidyverse. That's how you would install. So how do we do that in Elixir? So first, let's go up to the top. So I'm I'm in a, uh, a live book notebook. That's this is uh, an iterative programming session where you can write your thoughts, write your uh, write your code, and iterate on it really really quick. So how do we First, what packages do we need and how do we install them? So first, we're going to need the, one of the packages I just mentioned, Explorer, right? 
it deals with uh, one-dimensional and two-dimensional data frames uh, for fast data exploration. That's what we want. So we're going to add that. Notice when we click on that, it automatically adds this code for us. We'll run it in a sec, but then let's add a couple of other packages. So we need Vega Lite. Yep, so here's the pack the bindings to the Vega Lite. So Vega Lite is is the charts and graphics library. It's what it's what we're gonna use to do data visualization. And then we're gonna need the Kino um, Kino package. This Kino is is the is the package that allows us to create interactive widgets or or someone has created interactive widgets for us that we can use in Livebook. So we'll add that. And then if you saw right below that, we need we also need the Kino Vega Lite. Um, so this allow we'll get into it later, but we can use things called smart cells and we need we need this in order to use those. So we'll add that. And then all we have to do is click run the setup. So go ahead, you can see it's installing all the packages and we're done. So yep, if you get it okay, that means everything's installed correctly, no issues, you're good to go. So now, I'm gonna scroll down here. One last thing before we go into the next section. Um, notice how when Tidyverse loads, right, it loads all its functions in R. Well, Elixir, everything's namespaced. What that means is, like everything in the Explorer package is located under the Explorer module, right? So we go explorer.dataframe, dot you know arrange right so you would have to type that every time well something that that's nice that elixir gives you is we could namespace this stuff to where just give me one sec right we can we can uh we can alias our stuff to so we don't have to type explorer.data frame we can just work from the data frame so if we go alias explorer right so that's our module that we're working from and then we're gonna go data frame and series. Those are the two that we want. And so then let's go alias. So one one other we want to alias the Vega Lite. So instead of typing this out all the time, what we'd like to do is give it a different, a shorter name, right? So this way we could call VL dot something. So uh, let me evaluate that. So I'll just do one other little quick code just to show you what I'm talking about. So remember we had to do explore.dataframe. Well, now we can just type dataframe.arrange, right? And so now we can get to the functions. Just a little bit less code to write. And same thing with Vega Lite. Instead of having to write Vega Lite, we could write vl.new. Uh, yep. So now we can write vl.new as opposed to Vega Lite.new. Exactly. So we just it's just some niceties. You don't have to do it, but it but it certainly helps. So with that, that's all we've got for this video. We're going to jump into the, the first steps next time where we're going to figure out how do we find a data set, how do we load it in, into a data frame, um, and, and start the journey of working with, working with data and, and creating data visualizations. So with that, guys, if you like it, please like and subscribe. Uh, if it's helpful, um, Please, please put comments below. Let us know if there's something you got questions with or, or anything else you may want to see. And with that, guys, have a great day. I'll see you soon. Take care.